39-year-old Sophie Tuscan de Planchier was a French television producer who was killed outside of her holiday home in County Cork, Ireland on the night of 23 December 1996. Two 2021 documentaries have been released in search of the truth. The first, the Netflix series, Sophie, A Murder in West Cork, and the other, the Sky series, Murder at the Cottage, The Search for Justice for Sophie. And this one was produced by six-time Oscar nominee, Jim Sheridan. But both documentaries focus in on one particular prime suspect, English journalist, Ian Bailey. He was the first reporter on the scene after the crime was reported. Bailey was arrested twice by detectives, but no charges were ever filed due to lack of evidence. But in the court of public opinion, Bailey is guilty. However, he adamantly denies having any involvement in the murder of Sophie Tuscan de Planchier. And in fact, he's releasing a podcast on this very subject. The podcast is called Ian Bailey in his own words, and today I'm interviewing him. This is a very high profile case and you're not gonna wanna miss this exclusive interview. Stay tuned. Oh yeah, so how are ya? I'm great, how are you, Ian? Uh, Tom Agama, uh, that's Irish, I am good. Now tell me this, tell okay. me this true. How okay. is the land of the home of the brain? Oh, the it's... It's crazy as usual. <laughs> it's there's a lot going on here, but yeah, it's good. It's good. So, yes. Um, well, thank you for coming on the show. I kind of shared the little Slancha. yeah, Slancha, Slancha to you too. Come, come, come I tea. don't have anything to drink, but it's early, so um, I do yeah. like Irish tea, though. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank, yeah, it's great. Um, thank you for coming on the show. I, you have been on um, my friend Morris Shortall uh, with Cheap Heat Productions. You were on his show a couple times, and I think that's how we connected, you and I connected. But um, yeah, the story is so interesting. In the last year or two, there have been two major documentaries filmed about the Sophie Tuscan de Planchet uh, case. Uh, one with Netflix. Should one. We, should we? Should we? Yeah. Should we set the scene for the all of your listeners? Absolutely, set the scene for us, Ian. Let's okay. let's do that. Okay. Very 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 quickly uh, and eruditely. Yes. Twenty five and a half years ago, I'm, I'm a, an investigative journalist for Welsh. Yes. Bloodline. Yep. England. And I moved to Ireland in 1996 and okay. fell in love with the culture, people, and place. Me too. And then, yeah. just before Christmas of 1996, a um, a French holiday home owner came to Fran uh, from France, came to Ireland to her isolated little cottage, yeah. and was found dead on the. Christmas Eve Eve, that's Monday the 23rd. Yes, yes. Um, I was, I'm a reporter, Fleet Street trained, old fashioned investigative journalist, yep. uh, a Washington Post. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah. Um, all the president's men, Bernstein and Woodward. Yes. My, like inspirations. As oh, a young cub journalist. Great. Anyway, oh, that's, that's um, really interesting. And I, and I start reporting it, it's not too far from where I live, and then within six weeks, I find myself being arrested and accused of having committed the crime. Because you were the first journalist I, on the now, scene, is that right? Or the first journalist I, to report I, the... I'm, I, yeah, I think I was, I, I was... I definitely was the first journalist, and I was the lead journalist. I, I, I used to be, and I still am, a very good journalist. Mm -hmm. I was trained by the Sunday Times. Nice. Um, really. Yeah, great. I'm old school. Oh, yeah, school. that's good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Okay, so... It wasn't very long after that you became a person of interest in Sophie's murder. Then, how did that happen? Well, I don't know. I well, I can tell you actually. I can tell you, true, and tell you from the heart. And this has happened all over the world, and probably still does. A crime occurs, 
the police force in charge in this case in Ireland on Garda Shia Khan, yeah? mm-hmm. that means the guardians of the, the, the peace. Yes, yes. A, a senior detective uh, who I won't name, maybe I won't, no, um, decided to put me in the frame. Okay. And from that point on, my life for nearly a quarter of a century has been, been and, and that of my ex partner as well, and her family have been really, really. Jewel, um, Jules like had to deal with a lot of Jules, this Jules. too. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, you're you've been so you were thrown into this, and um, you became pretty much you know one of the main suspects. And I just well, yeah, I was actually branded or rebranded by members of Mangala Shirkana as yes. the quote prime suspect. Yes, yes, but. That was only to f- fit me into their false frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you when, I was, when I was first arrested, it's interesting, I'm just writing my autobiographical um, podcast. Yes, I want to talk about that too. It's bringing, it's, it's, yeah. it's bringing up a lot of, lot, of, lot of stuff that I... Anyway, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, what became very apparent in the first arrest was there was no evidence whatsoever. Right, there was never... Uh, no, you could never were, be charged because there was a lack of evidence, so they arrested you, but well, nothing really ever came of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, anyway just, but just in sequence, sorry. Yeah. Be, oh, no, you're good. You, you, you tell your story. Um, there was definitely an... I'm, I'm actually half Welsh. Yes, that was I, interesting. I was born in Britain. I'm a, I'm a British subject. Mm-hmm. I'm covering another case right now that out. happened in Wales, so I'm interested in that. So, yeah. All right. So it became very apparent to me that there was a sort of historical xenophobic um, a desire to put me in the frame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, you know, and, and that I didn't know Jules had been arrested. My partner had been arrested. And in connection also, to the mur- we, into Sophie's case, or oh, yeah, yeah, she was. Arre- I, I was arrested on on. I think it was uh, February, the eleventh, nineteen ninety seven. Okay. Um, I knew that the guards were searching. She had a studio and and too much detail, but mm-hmm. I I didn't know she'd been arrested. She was arrested. and She was arrested twice. I was arrested twice, and I'd been arrested three times. So did police? Did three, pol- three times. Yeah, I know. As many, uh, right? Yeah, did, a European arrest warrant on the did, did police think that Jules had something to do with this, possibly? or Yeah, they were trying to imply that. Yeah, okay. They, they were trying to imply that. Okay, interesting. Uh, but nothing ever anyway. came of that with either you or Jules, because, again, um, there was a lack of evidence. Because, um, and the DPP, in Ireland, we have a separate... Um, um, body or a, 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 like a government wing called yep. the DPP, the Director of Public Prosecutions. Mm-hmm. And in 2002, and I didn't know this for many years, but the, in 2002, the DPP went through the, the, the police file against me mm-hmm. and totally rejected it, saying it was absolutely flawed and mm-hmm. prejudiced. Right. And rejected it. Can you tell me a few... And then... And then sub- yeah, sorry. Go on. Well, can you tell me a few it, of the reasons? Story. Yeah, it is. Can you tell me a few of the the reasons that they had to think you could have been a person of interest? Did you? I mean, what did did they tell you a whole lot about why they were arresting you or no, evidence? No, no, it was it was basically accusational. You did it. You did it. You did it. You can't remember doing it now. Just admit it. You're British now. Fuck off. We're going to get you. Yeah. It was absolutely. It's a bit like. When I was a young lad, I was an actor in, in my school where I went to in England. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a, a thing called, we did the Caucasian short circle. We also did, uh, I think it was an American poet, uh, writer, uh, um, who did the Salem witch t- trials. It was called The Crucible. Yes. Miller. Yeah. Miller's Crucible. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yep. I mean, it, it, it was an example of that. Yes, it was like the Salem witch trials because let's face it. You're a little eccentric, you know? You don't, you kind of... Do you know, do you know, know <laughs> but I'll just... Yeah. Uh, uh, on momento, that's French. Okay. Um, do you know what uh, uh, the definition of eccentric is? What is it? 
Well, if you don't happen to like somebody who's far more interesting and colorful than you, you brand them eccentric and eccentric okay i could see that well no i did not mean any offense by the term eccentric no. i'm a bit eccentric myself so but you know you didn't you you didn't you know you were not like the typical cork person walking around the streets so you you stuck no, out I'm a little bit yeah well I, i'm six foot four and a half you know i'm yeah i'm like you know pretty tall yes you I'm were out in my younger days in, you were outspoken. And younger day. Yes. No, you were. Look, I'm a poet. Exactly, you're a poet. Our poet. Our poets supposed to be. That's old yes. That's exactly. But in my it. younger days, apparently, apparently, when I had a, a real good head of hair, mm -hmm. I was apparently quite tall, dark, handsome. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, I I've, didn't know. You've, there are pictures of you all over the internet from from every decade. So I've seen lots of pictures of you. Um, but yes, so so you think maybe that had something to do with you know you were a oh, little yeah, different. Yeah, you were definitely. an outsider, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah so, definitely. I was an outsider. Yeah. And now that was back in 1990. That's 25 years ago. Yes. The island that I, I first came to in uh, in the very early 90s changed. Um, islands changed. Islands are a magnificent place, and the people of the place and the culture is just the, the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Of course, as you know, and oh, yeah. a lot of your American citizens know, yes. this is where you came from. I just this came is, from Wales. This is, uh, well, but Wales is has it, a great history, it's too. It's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. It's it's become mm, the culture has only been enriched by the growing uh, demographic shift. Okay, got it. Um, after you were released, you were no longer. You know they couldn't hold you. There were some libel lawsuits that you 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 sued the yeah. gu the Guardia or. Um, for libel how did that happen well, no, go I, down I, no no just we i'm i'm a, I'm a journal, I'm yes. journalist by yeah. so the actual sequence was i took an action on advice from lawyers uh, against newspapers in the early 2000s okay so against the I media okay entirely successful i won two i lost five i appealed them they were settled okay okay and then um i took a, a case against the state of Ireland okay. and Gardashir Khanna yes, yes. in the High Court, which commenced in 2014. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't successful. Okay. In fact, I, lo I lost. Yeah. But I wasn't defeated. And I was actually vindicated by the process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the one quote that always stuck me and kept me going was from the Kennedy uh, brother who was the attorney general. Mm -hmm. And that, this isn't verbatim, but he said, when the, when the common man strikes out against the overuse of the force of the state, he does something good for himself, but he sends out a signal to other common people there may be a way of taking on a state so and i still am you're still working on it you're still but you might know but you might notice i'm not down but chipper this will come out the wrong way i'm in a john wayne state of mind yes so you're yeah, working yeah. on vindicating yourself you know taking yeah. back your name I, you're doing yeah, a few yeah, things yeah. um you're starting a podcast. Let's talk about that. What is that? Is well, I'm, yeah, I've, I've written. I've written the first. I mean, this is long overdue, and I should have done it before. But I mean, my life last year was just overturned by different events, two documentaries, my long-term partner saying adios. Yeah, Ian. I know. Go. I'm sorry to and hear then, that. And and then and dealing with this and dealing with that. But I'm just into at the moment a really fine. Um, it, I call it the muse. The, the you know the mu muse can come through in color, uh, architecture, whatever. My my muse is poetry. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, one of my greatest muses ever since I can first remember hearing him was one of yours. 
an, um, an immigrant, um, I think from uh, Europe. His name was Zimmerman, and his name he, he took the name of a, a, a Welsh poet, Dylan. Oh, 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 okay. And you know, and you know who I'm talking about, Roberto Dylan. One of the greatest. <laughs> yes. Ah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He's he's over in Ireland, I think, at the moment, or coming over. He is. is he? Oh, I was going to say, I I didn't honestly know he was still alive. Oh, yeah. that's terrible of me. Okay, well, good. Good for him. I mean... You're forgiven. <laughs> Don't worry. Roberto forgives you. Oh, anyway. my goodness. So... Well... Okay, so you're starting a podcast, Ian Bailey in his own words. What is this going to be yeah. about? A little bit of poetry, a little bit about yeah, the well, case? It's going to be more autobiographical. It, it's an audio biography as opposed to a written biography. Gotcha. Okay. And it yeah. will contain, and I've got episode one perfected. I've, I'm working on episode two and three and four. I've got. I just had a call before you you came through from my Scottish great Scottish um, engineer and uh, who's going to direct it. Oh, nice! That's great. It's it's um, yeah. It's a lot of work, but oh yeah, yeah. You'll we, you'll be you great at ask, it. Do you, as a man of interest, do you want to ask me about what you think is going to happen over this side of the Atlantic with Brexit, Britain? Oh Scotland, my goodness! Wales, Island. I am the last person to talk politics with. I stay out of everything, but I think it's, it's not, fascinating. It's not politics. Okay, well, tell me about it. What they call what they call the UK, which was really created, I think, by the Act of Union in eighteen hundred, mm -hmm. was like England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland. Is falling apart. Right, I do know it's, that. <laughs> it's, cr it's crumbling and tumbling, and Scotland next year will have a referendum to either stay within the the UK Union mm -hmm. or leave and become part of the e EU mm -hmm. or the European Union. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a really emotional rifting. Oh yeah, people are divided on this. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have yeah. friends in the UK and Ireland, and they talk about it a little bit. I don't follow it as well as I should. But what I am going to be following is the World Cup. How about you? Uh, no. 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 Uh, the last time... Excuse me, sorry. Yeah. The last time I followed the World Cup was when England won it in 1996. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, so you're a rugby guy, not so much soccer football yeah, I'm, I'm more rug I'm more, I'm more rugby and I'm really into GAA I've got more and more into the the Irish national sports mm -hmm, are, and mm -hmm. I'm really into the Irish and the yoga oh that's nice um, yeah not only is it nice for me as a Welsh Celt it's very satisfying and uh, do you know what the Celts and a huge number of ye Americans mm -hmm. are obviously like yourself descended from Irish blood mm -hmm. lines. Yes. The Celts have a gift that the Anglo Saxons generally don't have. What's and that? That is for crack, crack and wit. Oh, I love the crack. I love the Irish crack. It's the best. <laughs> oh. Yes, it's great. It's and of all of that, all fun. That has, uh, ju so just so your your listeners, you won't get arrested. I know. Uh, in America, you know, it's... A, a, a crack actually is a North of English word that was imported into in, yes. in, into Ireland. It's spelled C R A I C. It people, it means big C -R -A -I -C. fun. C R A I C. Yes. I think there might be a fodder. Oh, a fodder. There. Okay. It just I don't speak Irish, but using the the tongue mm -hmm. to have fun. Yes. Yes, it's yeah. so much crack to be had in Ireland. So it's great. There is. Yes. No limit of it. No. Okay. Well, I want to stay on track a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. so many things Sorry. I want to talk about. I wanted to ask you Sophie Toscan de Planchier's case has recently yeah. been reopened for a new yeah. a new set of eyes, a full review. So, it's called a cold, over here, we call it a cold case review. A cold case review. Okay. Yep. Yes. So, have you been contacted about that? Have you been? No. In no? no but I, I did call. I did call for it last June. Okay. It is underway. I'm prepared and very happy to cooperate with any inquiry that might come my way. Yes. 
Um, and I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be contacted since, I mean, it's all very new. Um, what are your thoughts? I recently read that people close to Sophie, neighbors, people like that, think that she was probably killed by someone she knew. Um, do you have any I've thoughts that. on that? I've, I've read that too. I don't, I mean, all I know is what I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as a journalist, you have your, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not the best journalist in the world, but my, like my antennae are out there and I've got these sort of things. I always felt that it was highly suspicious that it wasn't a local, that it was possibly somebody who had, um, mm -hmm. Uh, an interest in her no longer existing right. and I like I'm not pointing the finger at her ex-husband mm -hmm. she was the third wife of um, Daniel Toscan de yes. Pantier yes but there's an old Latin expression in law qui bono qui bono Q U I B O N O. Mm -hmm. I think the, the lead singer of uh, U2 took his name. Oh, Bono. Okay, yes. <laughs> Bono, yeah. You can say Bono. Or Bono, Bono, Bono. Yeah. yep. <laughs> Key Bono. Okay. And, and what it means is, like, who benefits? Yeah, that's always what you want to ask when a, an unsolved murder happened like this. Who benefits? And follow that. Yeah. That's usually who, where I'm you're going to find... Just on that point, very quickly... Yeah. Uh, you you had a great actor there now dead a few years called Peter Falk. He he was most famous for being in Colombo. Yes, and I, I love Colombo. I saw Colombo growing. I learned a lot about investigation from watching. Oh, I'm Columbo. sure. Yeah, he always, he always turned around, wouldn't he? Right at the last minute, he said, <laughs> "One last question." <laughs> yes. Are you telling the truth or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd get you. Yep. <laughs> Great, he's a great actor. Loved him. It's it's interesting actually. I grew up on this side of the Atlantic, but a lot of the stuff I was seeing on the early television, which was a lot of it was in black and white, was American. So we we yeah. grew up with this sort of like, and then we'd go to the flicks. That's the cinema uh, on a Saturday, and we'd see these things of cowboys and Indians, and then we heard tales of Tonto and the Lone Ranger. And it's oh, yeah, it's it funny. Wonderful. It's funny to me, as an American, what a big influence America had on pop culture and stuff in Ireland and England yeah. and everywhere. It's I'm it, yeah. It's amazing to me, but I mean, we had a, you see, you you were so far ahead with the technology at the time. You see, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. what was your favorite thing growing up? Oh, my favorite Sesame thing Street? growing up. Oh my goodness. Oh, I liked um, reading. I liked reading Rainbow. <laughs> I liked that show. If you know what that is with LeVar Burton, that was one of my no. favorites. Yeah. Um, can I show you some? some absolutely. You let's yeah. I, let's talk about some of your, that your th I, yeah. That that I that I won as a um. um I think it was eight, so I was nineteen sixty-five. Oh my goodness! The, this is um, this this is an American poet called. Uh, um, Jesus Christ. um, Hiawatha's childhood, and it's just the most amazing poetry. And, and you've had this since poetry. you were a child. Long, Longfellow, sorry, William William Longfellow. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, you've had this since Punishing you were poet. you were a kid. Uh, I got that at eight. Okay, so that's definitely an inspiration for your poetry. Um, and a vindication of the... <laughs> yeah. What do you have to say to, you know, the public about your role in this? I, how, is this I, how has this changed your life? Obviously, it has, <laughs> it's been very life-changing. What, what, you know, what would you be doing today, do you think, if not for this tragedy that happened in Cork? That's a multi, multi um, uh, tongued question. Mm -hmm. uh, all I know is this, so to try and answer you several questions in one. Sinead O'Connor tried to do that to me last year with like 28 questions <laughs> in one question. I'm like, hey, hey! So, so 
One, I have nothing to do with this, and I can put my hand on my heart and swear before any god, if any, whatever, I have nothing to do with it. Um, I'm not the best of guys in the world. You know, I, I've got my imperfections. I was guilty of what is known here as domestic violence to do with drink and like having a, I, yep. not a deliberate fight with my partner, but an accidental fight. Right. She forgave me. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just a poor boy. Well, my story is seldom told. <laughs> I've just lapsed into Paul Simon lyrics. Oh, that's another good um, one. It, it's a great one. I, I, I think I first heard that. That was brought out in 1996. I remember listening to it. I, I listened to it about ten times. Oh, on, wow. On, on an old-fashioned... <laughs> Record player, or...? Yeah, 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 one of those old little... <laughs> I was thinking earlier on as well, I was just out and about who we were going to speak. And um, a lot of my, my... Like, if you were to ask me who are my major poetic musical favorites, uh, the Beatles, obviously the Rolling Stones and loads of people. John Prine, who died, was one of the first COVID victims. Great. John Prine was a legend, yes. <laughs> John Prine, like and Dylan, Cohen, and uh, Chris Christopherson all said, Jesus Christ, we're good at lyrics, but he, he's the man. <laughs> and I met him. I met him. I met him. You did? Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. And I, I met him at a festival in, in County Waterford. Oh, my goodness. A lot of your listeners would know, which, How which is called Daisha in Kelga. And there was a two day festival back in 1992, 1992, 93. Mm -hmm. And I, was, I had the backstage pass. Mm -hmm. And I, this guy is coming down to me. He's dressed black leather hat, <laughs> black leather, all over, rhinestones. A real dude. <laughs> I just happened to say, I said, hi, who are you? He said, well, my name's John Prine. Oh, who are my you? goodness. What so, a moment. Um, I met Ringo Starr, too. I met Princess Diana as well. Um, wow. When I say met, not personally, but right. quite close up. Yep. I didn't meet JFK. Oh. I never met Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Thank God I've never met Mr. Donald Trump. Thank anyway, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's funny. Shoot. Okay, well, <laughs> I would like to know what life is like for you in Cork today. Uh, how do people treat you? Oh, um, with great respect. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely humbled by the... Um, by the, the people who... I mean... What, one to me, I fell in love with Ireland many years ago. I fell in love with the people, culture, and the place. Me too. <laughs> and uh, I am just, I'm, 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 I'm blessed. I'm absolutely blessed. People seem to, uh, every now and again, you'll get a bit of what we, we over here called, I don't know if I can say this on your podcast, but a bit, be whatever, right? <laughs> Very rare. Yeah. No. Good. Great. But now... And, and do you know what? They, do you know what? They, I think the Irish... The Celts, maybe. The Celts general. Let's say English, Welsh, whatever. Whatever. I think they're a little bit brighter than a lot of their... Some other peoples. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's my theory. Yeah. You might be right. <laughs> oh, yes. And I was going to say to you, yeah. do you remember when your, your man there, I think he was from Chicago, um, he went, he studied law, went up to the White House, um, Mr. Barack. Yes, Obama. yeah. I don't know if you recall, he does have some Irish Gaelic bloodlines in him. Yeah, you said that. I don't remember that part of his yes. history, but he came, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, you can check it out. He yeah, yeah. Too. Okay. He went, he went back to Mon. He went back to Monegal, Monegal, where okay. his bloodlines, ancestral bloodlines, kept one of them came from. Mm -hmm. 
And at the time, he was trying to get back into the White House, and the re-campaign slogan that he chose was not let America make America great again, but it was a very simple one. Which yes. now this won't work, really worked. Work. We can do but, it. <laughs> or yes, Irish. we can. Yes, yes, we can. Right. Yes, we can. yes we can. Or yes, we will. It has a sort of double imperative mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And and you flipped a, that an amazing campaign slogan. Yeah. Isn't it? And now it's so Ian it's Bailey's it. slogan. No, no, it's everybody's <laughs> slogan. Okay. Say it in Irish, though. How does it? How do you say it? Uh, it's Fajaling. Okay. It's Fajaling. It's Fajaling. Yes, I've, we can. I've been trying to yes, take we some. Will. Yes, we will. I've been trying to take some online Irish lessons, but the language is so, so difficult to learn. It's oh, li- try to uh, Duolingo is quite good. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you want to talk about before we go? Um, where you know your podcast how much longer do you think it'll take uh when 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 do, are think, you planning I, on releasing I, I, it I, i'd probably well i got episode one done i could record it later this week if my engine is free um episode two or three it'll uh, the spring the spring the spring 2020 yeah you don't want to rush it you want to get it right uh you're that's, that's yeah the secret you're a great speaker um, so I think it's going to be very interesting. I can't wait. I'm going to be following you and um, seeing where it, where it goes. Do you think that the po- the information you put in the podcast might possibly affect the reopening of the the investigation? No, no, because no, the reopening of the case is ongoing. Okay. All I'm saying in the podcast is the truth okay. in my own words. Just the same stuff uh, you've been there, saying there, all of these years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Only, only in much more detail. Okay. Yes. Only. Yep. So thank you so much, Ian Bailey, poet, journalist. Thank you for talking about this case with us. And it's been really interesting seeing the documentaries and what they're doing with the cold, ca- cold case reinvestigation and all of that. So yeah, thank you for speaking with us today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And God, God bless America. <laughs> Thank you.